Very good. Now we're both recording and we're uh, Steve Struggle and Abraham Weisfeld here discussing the uh, issues of the day. We're beginning a series here and uh, we're uh, well uh, connected now to be able to bring you this uh, information. Um, Steve, you wanted to talk about the uh, pandemic, the new variant, the Omnicon. And uh, sure do. It, the discrimination it of the third be, world, I guess. Well, it's, it's really kind of shaking the world, you know. Yeah. Um, historic. Um, I've, I've heard stories that the main place it was found was in South Africa, or it was found in Egypt, or it was found somewhere else. Um, they're banning travel, they being the capitalist countries, major capitalist countries are banning travel from Africa. They're not banning it from anywhere else. Um, it's shown up in California and New York and other major states in the United States already. No one wants to do any lockdown or anything different for preventive measures. Mm. Um, it just seems that history is, is repeating itself. And in the sense of the the propaganda of the propagation of the belief that everything's going to be okay, and we just have to live with this. And of course, I don't buy that um, from a social perspective or from a health perspective. Um, so it, it's just a, it's just been a very interesting development um, in the United States. One party that's very quiet is the anti-vaxxers. You won't hear none from them right now. They're just silent. They're just silent because they're, they're they can't say anything. Yeah. They all say that their COVID's a hoax. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, they can't talk to this at all. So mm -hmm. they've been silenced at least temporarily, mm -hmm. uh, at least within, within this country. Yeah. You know, one of the things that really hurts the situation is that the third world and the what we will call the underdeveloped countries don't have vaccines even even to give out, yeah. um, and there seems to be no movement to get them back the necessary vaccines that they have. Mm. Um, the struggle we had last year sometime to try and break the patents and to allow local companies or other or set up manufacturers around the world. There was some movement in some parts of the world where manufacturing capacities have been set up, but in general, that didn't that didn't fly at all. So, you know, the little I read about this indicates that those who are not vaccinated are always at, are at greater risk for uh, Omicron or Delta or other variant of COVID infection, and those who are vaccinated at least have a better protection against death. Um, whether this particular variant goes around the vaccines, et cetera, time will tell. But to me, to not be vaccinated now, especially if say you have high, you're in a high risk group mm -hmm. or, or if you're a youth, seems to be rather uh, naive at, at least and stupid at worst. That's just my personal opinion. And my you know uh, political opinion, I don't think the WHO is taking, I don't think the WHO is taken seriously by the capitalist, capitalist governments, uh, I'm not saying it's it's a good organization, but you know I, I have some concerns about how this is all being handled because if we as a world just accept certain risks as well as the way it is, then what's that say about our development? When, when do we fight those risks? Only when it involves profit or territorial expansion. It, it's just interesting to me how capitalists think. Anyway, that's it for me on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been following a lot of the information and it indicates uh, like in South Africa, only 30% uh, of the population is vaccinated there. And so they're very susceptible to the new variant, which yep. they, they blame on Botswana. <laughs> and, oh, uh, yeah. and, then, and then it turns out, you know, that there was also uh, this early variant, you know, in uh, Amsterdam too, but yep. they, don't talk about that yes. much. <laughs> they don't talk about yep. that very no. much. You know? They sure don't. No, they want to talk about that. No, no, no. Can't yeah. do that. Can't talk about Amsterdam. Yeah. No. no. Well, with you know the uh, with the pandemic, you know, going on and on like this, you know, like it's inevitable that there's going to be new variants, you know, because the virus is is fighting. It's not an alive, you know. It's just a molecule, but it's still, you know, 
finding a way, you know, to replicate itself in any way possible. And it's eventually going to find a way right. to the, the vaccine, you know. Now they say they're going to build a, a new vaccine for a third inoculation, a third dose, you know, that's going to be particular to this uh, variant. But it's, you know, like a, they're playing a catch up game, you know, they're losing. And the people who are losing their lives are the ones, you know, who are either unvaccinated, you know, in uh, the first world and and in right. the third world, you know, it's it's not even a matter of choice, you know, it's a matter of, you know, a destiny. And uh, in particular, you know, the Palestine was very uh, severely uh, affected, you know, because Israel refused to give them the vaccine. You know, the first, you know, uh, vaccines that Israel gave to Palestine, you know, finally, you know, it's like only 250, you know, for, for the elite political f figures, probably. And then, you know, even though they had, you know, storage, you know, of vaccines, uh, one or two million uh, uh, dosages storage, you know, for the um, uh, AstraZeneca, they didn't give it, you know, to Palestine, you know, be until it was, you know, too late, you know, until it was nearly an its expiration date, you know, then they handed it over. And then Palestine said, you know, like, forget it, you know, like, this is useless. And, you know, the whole third world is being treated in that way. And, uh, yeah. Uh, what do they expect? You know, what do they want? You know, like, uh, you know, if 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 this Im uh, implies that they are thinking, you know, that the third worlders are going to be dying off at a greater rate, you know, than anybody else, you know, and they're content, you know, to let it happen. Now, well, you know, that's, you know, the genocidal practice of uh, of imperialism, you know, uh, made evident, and that that's what's happening right now. Yes. And uh, Cuba is an exception. Cuba made its own vaccine and it's treating its own population, I understand. Is that what you've heard as well? Yes, I've heard the same thing, yes. I, I wish we could get more information on that. Uh, I really, I wish we had more knowledge about, well, we could get it. We have to just take the initiative and find out ourselves. Yeah. And contact the, Cub contact the Cubans directly. Yeah. Or through contact or, or read their news media because the U.S. media, New York Times, Washington Post, Associated Press, UPI—you know—they aren't going to tell you what's going on. Yeah, they're all. They're all but we—we we it'll be good to find out what's just get more information about that vaccine and also what what Cuba thinks about the um, Omicron variant because I'm sure there's scientists have something to say about it. Yeah, what should they do? Uh, yeah. You know, the the uh, bourgeois political culture is so pathetic. Uh, during the first confinement, I was caught in France. And there, 40% of the population believe this Dr. Raoult there, who was saying that the uh, pandemic was not a pandemic, you know, that it was just, you know, normal winter flu and it was going to end, you know, in springtime. And then it didn't. And then France, you know, was having you know, like a, a thousand people dying a day. And so they finally figured out, you know, that they needed to wear masks. And then they found out that the government had destroyed all the masks that they had in storage. And then they had to get, you know, like a supply, you know, like a it's like a comedy of errors. It's incredible. But, you know, basically, there's a lack of infrastructure, which has um, destroyed the uh, possibility of having a, a treatment by convalescent plasma that is the only sort of, you know, uh, real antiviral uh, agent available, you know, because those people who have been sick, uh, have the antibodies, you know, those who have recovered and have uh, right. recovered, you know, they have the antibodies, you know, to stop the actual virus, the antiviral antibodies, whereas the uh, vaccine is only uh, prepared to uh, combat, you know, the, the, the virus in terms of its transmission uh, uh, feasibility through the spikes that they're called, the spikes on the outside of the, uh, of the cocoon that carries the virus inside. Right. So, Vaccine is, you know, an RNA, uh, mRNA, you know, uh, treatment, you know, that uh, combats, you know, the the transmission of the virus, you know, once it's inside of you into into your cells, but it doesn't treat the virus itself, you know. Once you've become infected, you know, then 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 you're, you know, in the hospital, and then you have to be treated with a whole bunch of other things. Right. So right. It's 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 an it's a treatment the vaccine. It works, but it's not. A, it's not, you know, like a solution. The solution, you know, uh, being used in China was it's being used by Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, you know, and, and it's being used, you know, for some healthcare workers in Los Angeles, I've read, you know, which is uh, plasmic convalescent uh, antibody treatment. And they, you know, can get the sample of it. They can 
uh, clone it, you know, in the laboratory and make, you know, an injection of monoclonal antibodies, you know, that actually treat the virus itself for either people who have been infected or to immunize people so that they don't get infected. This is possible scientifically, but they're not implementing it. Why? It's, you know, labor intensive, you know, needs a lot of nurses to, you know, to transfer, to, you know, to, to get a transfer of a blood donation, you know, from the people who have, uh, you know, overcome the illness. And then they have to transfer the, uh, the blood, you know, plasma after it's been concentrated by centrifuge into somebody else to immunize them. So, you know, this is very labor, labor intensive and they don't have the people, you know, right. they're overwhelmed, you know, with the people who are already sick. So they say, oh yeah, well, the magic cure is, you know, a vaccine because that's easy. You know, they just have to spend money, public funds, you know, and, and build up, you know, the uh, billions of the pharmaceutical companies. Okay. And then, as we see now, you know, it's not really, uh, uh, you know, effective in terms of uh, uh, the possibility of new varieties, you know, that are going to be um, stronger in their uh, transmission than the uh, vaccine can combat. So, well, you know, this is, uh, you know, like known that the convalescent plasma is the way to cope with, you know, with any sort of, you know, an, a pandemic and this has been used you know for for a long time uh i read a i i knew about this you know treatment from a, a jewish uh, story that i read it was about this family in which the father was ill with uh with the uh, plague and so the son you know uh was trying to uh, figure out what to do and the you know was a scientific kind of a kid and they had a horse you know because the father was a peddler and so he took uh the, uh, the blood from his father, which was infected, infected the horse. The horse was strong enough, you know, to develop the antibodies, you know, to cope with it after a week. And so the kid then took the blood of the horse, injected it into, into the father, who got the antibodies, and then survived. This is the story that I read, you know. So I investigated oh. this further. And uh, sure enough, you know, that there was all sorts of, you know, testing and, and usage, you know, of this technique. Uh, throughout the world, and I have the whole sort of you know, list of research that I've done, you know, in the article that I wrote that was published in a Palestine um, journal in Gaza, advising, you know, the, the local people to be able to use uh, convalescent plasma, because they didn't have the vaccine, or th there was no vaccine at the time, you know, but they di didn't even get the vaccine when it was available, but they could be using convalescent plasma. This could be a general practice throughout the third world, but the third world, you know, as well, you know, is overwhelmed and they don't have the personnel to be able to do that sort of thing. It's only in China that I think this is being used on a mass scale. Wow, interesting to hear that. I know, I, yeah, no, I think I, I think I saw that in one of your your, your prior videos on, on COVID, you talked about that. Yeah, the difference being that, you know, the way the healthcare system works in the, in the, in the capitalist system is that each individual is treated as a patient, you know, everybody's divided up into being a patient and each patient is treated according to their symptoms, but there's no social biology. There's no general treatment of society as a whole. There's no sense of, of, uh, of society being a biological organism that needed to be uh, treated and right. protected. Because uh, right, that's true. Very true. Very true. Very you true. know, and this you know sense of a collectivity is is missing, and this is what is making this uh, you know uh, uh, medical treatment you know uh, uh, not uh, not effective. So you know, uh, society has to be treated. You know, each individual society and now society as a whole in the world has to be treated as a biological organism, and we have to protect ourselves collectively. And this has not yet entered into the bourgeois, you know, uh, consciousness because it can't. They're operating on, on individualism, individual, you know, like a, a, a meritocracy, you know, type of a system, which cannot conceive of a collectivity that needs has needs of its own. So, I'm pessimistic about you know how this is going, and and uh, I knew that this is going to be a long duration uh, struggle, and it's uh, going on even. Uh, longer than anyone expected well so, yeah I, I i guess with me though i i never expect capitalist crises to end too soon yeah so i kind of perceive when it first started it, it 
it would be years before this ever got under control, if it ever did get under control, because capitalist science yeah. seems to be about making money off diseases and not eradicating diseases. Exactly. This is my this is my general view of science in general. If the money that the world, not just the United States, but, United States, but the world, if the money the world spent on military ar ar armaments, public relations, bank filling out banks and companies was spent on health care and at least focusing seriously on treatment and eradicating diseases. I think a lot of diseases in the world would be either gone from the gone from the books or or on in serious decline. There simply isn't the interest. Like you said, yeah. the social the social approach is lacking. It's all individual approach. Yeah. So you know that's how I see it. So I I'm sorry that the pandemic is continuing. However, without a change in how people and government, people one, demanding into it, and I mean, seriously, like demanding it into this, and mm -hmm. two, governments and private in entities and private entities are about making money. They're not about any, anything. Yeah. You know, like um, Pfizer is making, Pfizer and Moderna are making buku dollars off of this, off of this pandemic. Yeah. So I don't see them ever wanting it to end, quite frankly. Yeah. Unless they can find some way for some kind of drug you can take as a prevention, and we all gonna have to prescribe that drug, and then they're still making money. Yeah. So I, I just kind of I I would like to have a different view of of those human beings involved in those companies, but I think they're a bunch of sick, greedy um, human beings who don't really care about nothing but how rich they can get and they're getting pretty damn rich off this let me yeah. tell you yeah yeah no and what you say about science is so true so true when i was studying sciences at the university of waterloo uh one of the um anti-vietnam war activists you know in the united states sent me the um the uh con congressional record which uh the senator um i forget his name but he was an anti-war senator uh, i was at a a presentation with him one time and uh, he uh, uh, published uh, the whole uh, list of military contracts with universities in the congressional record and so the activist sent me the information because it included you know universities that the military was uh, invest you know investing in research in canada as well american military okay. in canadian university uh, you know, in my Canadian, you know, my Canadian university at the University of Waterloo in Ontario. So, you know, I, I did an expose of this, wrote a whole report, it was published by the student government. And then after that, you know, like, I had no motivation, you know, to study sciences anymore, you know, because what was I going to do, you know, you know, after completing a degree in sciences or going, you know, in, into further research, you know, research for what, you know, for the military? <laughs> you know, that's where the money was. That's where the, you know, like the resources were available, you know, to make use of the research. And so, you know, like it's dead end. So I quit sciences. That's why I quit and, and, and switched over into political science. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, it is, but that, 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 that's how I see the pandemic. And I think, actually, though, I really want to put a challenge out to people who are so-called hesitant toward a vaccine. And my challenge to them is, would you rather die? I mean, or have, be sick for a long time? Mm -hmm. or take a chance of, of being healthy because that's really what it comes down to i mean ultimately i chose to get vaccinated because i said well maybe i can avoid covid but if i get infected there's a good chance is a pro high probability i'll get infected it's because of what i do for a living mm -hmm. there's no protection i have against the disease that's destroying me yeah so I would just say those who have who are so-called hesitant based on just not trusting corporations, or I understand that. And if there's some natural way you can do it, please share with me. But I don't think that works right now. Yeah. I think I think you're kind of stuck with science, though. When I say stuck, you just that's a reality you have to face. Yeah. It's kind of like buying car insurance. They make you buy it. Even if you didn't buy it, you get a wreck, what are you gonna do? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's just I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just challenging people who were hesitant based on whatever. 
because I've seen communities where there is no, where people don't wear masks, mm. where they don't wear masks, and they they usually are they usually are led by Republicans mm. or or um, hedonists or or you know libertarians, right? Libertarians and COVID is is just going rampant. Mm. Mm. It just does what it wants to do. Yeah. Wow. You know, They're going to end up uh, infecting their grandparents and sacrificing the whole old, older generation. After the grandparents know, die, you know, then they, you know, let them think about it, you know, like in that context. And that, yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's, that's a very good context, I think, with which to think about it. Because let's say you don't give a damn about society, which I think is kind of a screwed up way to looking at things. Let, let's say you don't care about society. The average person does care about their grandparents. Yeah. Yes, the average person, that person does care about mom and dad's health. Yes, they do. Yeah. They do, so that, that actually might be a good way to spread spread the message. Thank you for sharing. That's right. That. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Right. And there's no alternative, yeah. you know. Right now, the vaccine. You know, I have two doses of the vaccine, and uh, right. then I had a blood test done by a medical study, and it turned out that I also have the antibodies, you know, from having been uh, convalescent. I was uh, I was infected by uh, the uh, by COVID, and I didn't even know it. You didn't even and, know. Wow. I didn't wow. Know Isn't that something? Yeah, but then, you know, like, <clears throat> I'm not, you know, a typical, pseudo, you know, biological organism, because I've been a vegetarian for 53 years, and uh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not susceptible, you know, to being ill, you know, from uh, a viral infection. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm solid in that way, but. Uh, Pretty good. That's good. Well, know, that's, that shows the importance of, the importance even, of how a proper diet can help, too. Oh yeah. Just it just in gen it's in general. Again, the capitalists who make chips and junk. Remember, the yeah. average rat won't eat those chips. <laughs> no, they don't. I mean the junk the capitalists make, the average rat won't eat it. Yeah. They'll eat, they'll eat crackers. I mean they love the, they, they want the flesh, they want the meat, they want the corn, they want that kind of food, and they will pass over junk candy. They know better than they eat that nonsense. Oh yeah. So they get sick. Because they get sick. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. well, thank you for that information about you know the diet too. I think it's really overlooked quite a bit. Oh. Yep. I was, uh, you know, uh, it's not only you know for health reasons uh, that I became vegetarian. Uh, it was also for ethical reasons. You know, I, I can't see you know like uh, killing another animal you know when it's not necessary. So. It also saved my life, you know, because I, when I had my first uh, back operation for scoliosis and I couldn't walk or breathe anymore, and I ended up getting infected, you know, with blood that was contaminated that was, you know, brought over by the Red Cross from the American prisons, you know, where they were paying prisoners seven dollars for a bag of blood, and oh then they boy. would bring it into Canada, you know, and then offer this, you know, as transfusion blood for hospital operations, <laughs> and so I got it, you know, I was uh, I got hepatitis C, which was mortal. You know, twenty years life expectancy after that. Mm -hmm. But you know, on on vegetarian diet, I lived for twenty eight years and then got you know cured. You know, with the treatment that developed from uh, interferon alpha two B, which is an antiviral that uh, one of the first antivirals. You know that that cured me completely, complete eradication. So science, you know, can do these things. You know, when it has the resources and the research and everything like that. But it's, you know, the, the laboratory that developed the polio vaccine in Toronto, Connaught Laboratories at the University of Toronto, public facility, and that's why they developed the polio vaccine. They didn't put a patent on it, so everybody could get it, and it worked. And then what does the university do after that? They sold the laboratory to a private company, and it's never developed anything since. Good old, good old university logic, you know? Yeah. Good old academic logic. Go go with the private institutions all the time. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, Dr. Weisfield, that's all for me today. I appreciate the time with you. It was very good. good. A little, very good discussion. So now we have the uh, the videos, you know, to be able to uh, upload to uh, your uh, right. YouTube uh, channel. And looking forward to that. Excellent. Three. Excellent. Very good. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Okay. See you next week then. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.